Hi, my name is Stacy Mosser, and I want to talk to you today about how to teach your baby how to read. All party stars need practice. No one's perfect right away. That was a video of my daughter Ophelia. She was reading at the age of two. My other daughter Ruby was reading at about two and a half. Uh, my son Jack here was reading at the age of three. My other son Julian was reading at three and a half. And my other son Elliot was reading by the age of four. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did that. And I'm going to show you how you can do it too. Hi Jack. Oh. Hi. This is Jack at two months old, and we are having a little conversation. From birth until about three months old is that fourth trimester where we're really developing a bond and oral language development. Here we are having a turn-taking conversation, and I speak to him, and I pause, and I let him respond. And that's the beginning of learning how to read, is that oral language development. You say good. Yeah. Good boy. This is baby's first book. Let's read it. Teeth my soft wings. Flip, flip, flip. Flip, flip, flip. I like to start reading with my babies when they're about three months old. At this age, they can hold their heads up. They can, you know, sort of sit and track things with their eyes. And I love um, reading cloth books and board books, things that they can chew on and interact with. And we're learning a lot about reading at this stage. We're learning how to hold a book, how to uh, turn the pages, that there's words and pictures in a book. And most importantly, that it's fun and it's a time for cuddles and love. E is for egg. A, a, a. A is for apple. A, a, apple. B is for ball. B, b, ball. Cat. C is for cat. C, c, cat. That was me doing flashcards with Ophelia when she was six months old. I started creating my own resources with her. She's my third born. Um, with Ruby and Elliot, when I was trying to find flashcards, there were a lot of um, confusing ones where they would use an SH digraph to teach the S sound, or they would have a long A and an ape when it could be a monkey. And it's better to start with short vowels. So I wanted flashcards that had the letter, upper and lower case, a picture, and a word. I also created these first word flashcards that you can see me using with Jack to be used simultaneously while teaching the ABCs. Um, I recommend starting to teach the ABCs and the first words together starting at about three or four months of age. Ophelia was really into it at that young of an age. Um, Elliot took him a little while to get into it, so you know your child best, but I, the younger you can start, the better. With these first word flashcards, I tried to pick words that were um, meaningful to young children and that had some kind of motion that could go along with it, so they were easy to use. And by learning first words with the ABCs, children are learning that um, these letters that they're memorizing the names and sounds of come together to form these meaningful words. We're not really sounding words out yet at this point. We're just learning what letters and words are. Hey. Hi. Hi. Bye. Bye. Clap. Yay. Clap your hands. Good job. F is for fish. Fish. F. Fish. As you can see, nine month old Jack is very engaged with the flashcards. I like to do a little sing song where I say the letter, name, 
uh, point to the picture and the sound it makes. At least I'd point if I wasn't holding the camera in one hand in this video. Um, but it takes a little while to get to be able to go through the entire alphabet in one sitting. We started with three or four letters and then we'd increase it and the more he saw the flashcards and the more we cuddled, the more he loved them into the point where it was a really, really special time for us. It's teaching Jack his ABCs. C is for cat. C, C, cat. C, cat, cat. I have created free digital downloads at teacherspayteachers.com slash store slash embracing dash motherhood of ABCs, first words, uh, vocabulary of colors, numbers, and shapes. Um, I also have three letter word resources plus some advanced phonemic awareness resources to teach diagraphs, long vowels, um, other vowel sounds, complex consonants, and blends. I also have a lot of resources I've created to teach handwriting, uh, math facts, and there's many more things I will continue to upload. Uh, you can also check out my website. I have um, a blog where I talk about all things pertaining to motherhood, and that's at embracing-motherhood.com. I also have a YouTube channel where you can stream all of my videos as well, so check those out. Blue. Purple. Oral language development is still a huge part of laying the foundation for learning how to read. The more specific vocabulary children have, the more background knowledge they will understand for comprehending what they are reading. I have resources to teach children shapes, colors, and numbers. Not only do the shapes and numbers lay the foundation for math, but it helps them to explain the world around them. A triangle. After your child is familiar with the names of the shapes, you can start to talk about the attributes of the shapes. And this is a huge um, precursor to understanding geometry. So talking about how many sides something has, how many corners or vertices it has, um, talking about the types of lines, so parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Uh, shapes are just a wonderful resource that you can really dive into. Eight fish! Yay! Yay! Learning about the one-to-one -one counting principle is a very difficult concept and takes a long time to learn. What that means is each object that I point to is attributed to one thing. So you'll see Jack kind of pointing at a whole bunch of numbers and eventually he'll learn to point to one object for each number and that's a huge precursor to understanding okay. arithmetic. Four. 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 Six. One, two, three, four. Four balls. So if you teach your child letter names and letter sounds really, really well, uh, simultaneously teach first words, also introduce key vocabulary of colors, numbers, and shapes, start young, do a little bit over a long period of time, and your child will have the foundation for learning how to read. After that, you'll teach three letter words. And in the next video clip, you'll see I taught that to Ophelia when she was two. She picked it up really quickly and she was reading. That's all she needed and she could read any book and it just progressed from there. So I'll show you those video clips and then I'll talk more about three letter words. Oh, thank you for me and I. That's right. You spelled the word mat. Get birthday monsters are in town. 
Let's play the monsters birds went in. And yeah, it's morning and it's begin. All party stars need practice. No one's perfect right away. No one's perfect right away, they need practice. The Trump story is about the mermaid kingdom. Once upon a time, I mean, them the top is over the moment in them. What do we? A moment named the moment. Mariana. A moment named the Mariana found the magic phone so they could go so the job is away. It will be a fun day. Okay. Hello Kitty has a mug. She does not see the rug. Okay. This is Julian and I practicing a strategy I really love when reading where I read uh, the sentence and point to either the ending word if it's rhyming or words that I know that he knows in the book. Let's start with that. I love using magnet letters, muffin tins, and my flashcards for teaching three letter words. These magnet letters are from Lakeshore Learning and they're amazing because they separate the vowels into the color red and the consonants in blue. So as you can see here, Ruby is teaching three-year-old Julian and she's sounding out the word and saying s a we're focusing on letter sounds here because at this point, your child should know letter names and letter sounds really, really well. But we want to isolate those letter sounds and figure out how to sound out words. So, sat, sat. And I love how she's taken out all the consonants that go at the beginning of the word. So he's choosing from those letters how to spell each word. At my Teachers Pay Teachers store, you can find these three letter words, um, letters, so that you don't need to buy the magnet letters. You could use my letters that um, are for each word family. Um, I do sell it as a bundle if you wanted to support me, but I also have everything individually um, available for free, so you can do that as well. So when children know letter names and letter sounds really, really well, and can put those letter sounds together to form words and you're spending a lot of time practicing and reading quality literature together the next step is advanced phonemic awareness which is pointing out some of those trickier parts of our english language when children are first learning about the alphabet it's best for them to learn one sound for each letter so we start with the short vowels but now, children are ready not only to learn about the long vowel sounds, but I like to introduce them to the common spelling patterns for each long vowel. Digraphs are two letters that come together to make one sound. So for example, the PH in the word elephant makes the F sound. Digraphs are really tricky, but once you point them out, you can see them in the context of quality literature. A trigraph is three letters that come together to make one sound, as in the word catch. The T-C-H makes the CH sound. Next we have other vowel sounds. There are vowel digraphs, which are two vowels that make one sound. So for example, the short double O in the word book makes the U uh sound, and the long double O where the two O's in balloon make an OO sound. And then we have diphthongs, which are vowel digraphs that glide together. You can still hear each sound, they just, well, glide together. As in the O-Y in toy and the O-I in coin, 
two different spelling patterns uh, for the same sound. Finally, we have R controlled vowels. The bossy R after a vowel forces the vowel to change its sound. So in the word bark, the AR makes the R sound. And that's just a little bit different when there's a vowel following the R. We have six complex consonants in our English language where the consonants make more than one sound. So for example, you could have the hard C, K, where the C is copying the K sound, as in the word cat, or you could have the soft C, where the C is making the S sound, as in circle. Blends are two or more consonants that glide together while each keeping their own sound. So in the word blocks, you can hear the BL blend together and in the word blend. Um, they're not really that tricky, but I liked to include them in my resources because I think it's great additional practice for children to be um, reading and learning about this group of words. Are you spelling your words? Good job. I'm spelling happy. Oh, I love it. This is happy. Very good. Now for sad. <clears throat> now for sad. <laughs> All my posters. No for it. Spell. I need the A now. Now I just need the B. So. Mm -hmm. Job spelling comb. No for feather. Can you spell fe feather? And so what the? What does it start with? T the A. The digraph is the T H makes the th sound. <laughs> but it starts with an F sound of f feather. Yeah. Something that skin Viking is causing trouble in space, but Super Rabbit Boy is ready. Uh, well, Don't can, worry. Grab Grab I can mm. stop Viking Viking. We really oh, thank you yeah. so much. No no. Now how will you I get to wait. space? <coughs> the perfect off to the fire up that time and see in the garage. <laughs> oh yeah, perfect opportunity. Fire up that time machine. In the, in the garage. Okay, why would you have a time machine in the garage? Yeah. But how could it fit in the garage? Yeah. Time machine, which you travel from you turn back to the past where you will be, baby, or to the future. When you're going to be an old man. man. And I'll get back to the top of my So there you have it. That pretty much sums up the last uh, 13 years of my life. My oldest is 13. My youngest is five. Um, I've been a stay-at-home mom now for 11 years. And before that, I was a classroom teacher. I taught uh, third and fourth grade for seven years. I got my master's in curriculum and instruction with an ESL endorsement. And I was an ESL uh, coach for one year where I helped teachers make input more comprehensible for their English language learners. Being a stay-at-home mom for over a decade has been the most amazing gift I could have ever given myself and my children. It was not easy. It was also the most difficult thing I've ever done, but full of so many amazing rewards. I'm now back uh, teaching again and very happy to share these resources with you. Please check out my Teachers Pay Teachers store. If you want to support me, you can purchase any of the bundles. Otherwise, everything that's an individual digital download is free. Please enjoy and use these resources. 
Also, check out my website at embracing-motherhood.com where I talk about everything from how to calm a fussy baby to how to create a stock tank pool. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Just look up Embracing Motherhood. You can subscribe to that. I also have just a Stacy Mosser YouTube channel where you can see uh, video clips of just what my life has been like and little highlights of being a stay-at-home mom. So there you go. Happy reading. And we'll see you later. Oh, it's really pouring hey! now. Can't walk. I'm not supposed to. I'm oh, I gotta do the rhyming. You need to be your. We're gonna read your book next, Ophelia. I'm gonna read this book with Elliot first about. About. Okay, you can go to bed. What's the matter, Ruby?